Hello to all of our CBA rising ninth graders. Um, hi, I wanted to reach out to um, all of you, to parents and uh, new upper school students for the fall, and I wanted to go over some basic information. This is information that I go over in um, a meeting in April. I usually meet with the parents and I go over information like this. And then I also go over this information with the students as well when they come upstairs to visit uh, for a day or half a day. We have a moving up day. So I wanted to reach out to you and go over some basic upper school info um, so that you can have some things to think about and that more importantly, uh, we can begin to start a dialogue and begin working together, right? So first and foremost, welcome to the upper school. Uh, what I'd like to do is go over our two types of diplomas, right? Uh, we in the upper school offer a standard diploma and an advanced diploma. Right off the bat, I want to tell you that both diplomas are high school diplomas. Both diplomas enable students to go to college. Um, both diplomas provide that opportunity. It's just that certain students who are able to um, and maybe are thinking of studying certain things in college can begin to maybe take certain courses at CBA on a high school level rather than waiting until they attend college. I also want to tell you that ninth graders, they all have the same basic schedule and that you as a new ninth grader, you do not have to pick what diploma you're aiming for. A standard standard or an advanced. Those are decisions that we make together um, during the 10th grade year. So ninth and 10th graders, you're all on the same track in essence, and you all have the ability to achieve a standard diploma um, and begin taking those courses when you're upperclassmen. So it's really important to kind of um, let you know that I don't want anyone being worried, oh, do I need to decide right now if I need to elect a standard or an advanced? No. My main concern concern for ninth graders is that they adjust to high school, adjust to the upper school, have a successful transition. So everyone is on the same page and everyone starts out in that way, right? So please, please, you do not have to make any of those decisions right now. But again, I want to kind of give you um, the basic overview, right? So all upper school students, again, regardless of standard advanced, take literature, English, um, however you'd like to call it, um, four English or literature and or literature courses, one each year, right? Ninth graders take experiencing literature, which is a basic English 9 overview. Uh, English 10 is world literature. English 11 is American literature, which connects with social studies 11, United States history, and then seniors take British literature. Let's talk about math for a minute, um, because a lot of our students um, have a bit of a difficulty with math, and that's okay. Um, every upper school student needs to have three math credits, a minimum of three math credits. Now, those math credits, credits must include, oh, excuse me, must include algebra and geometry. Right now, some students, it might take them two years to get through algebra, and that's OK. It's funny because some students who have a difficulty in algebra seem to have a much easier time in geometry, and sometimes it goes the other way. Um, so it just depends if a student needs an extra year to kind of gain that foundation and achieve the um, standards of the curriculum, then that's fine. That's why you note that they have to have a minimum of three math classes um, and they have four years to take that. So there's some there's some buffer built in there. You'll also see that uh, one of those math credits of the three can be a computer science course. And many ninth graders take computer science as part of their ninth grade schedule, which is a great way to knock out that course. So really, we're talking about algebra and geometry um, with the addition of computer science, okay? Now, uh, three science courses, um, ninth graders take earth science, 10th graders take biology, 11th graders take chemistry, um, and we'll talk about another option that seniors can take once we get to the advanced three social studies courses. So although students take a social studies course a year, for graduation, only three are required. It's kind of like a, 
a little buffer in a way at ninth and tenth. They have to have passed either ninth grade or tenth grade social studies. Um, but to graduate every student, and not just a student of CBA, but every student in Virginia uh, has to take United States history and American government. And 11th graders take United States history, um, 12th graders take American government. I have another slide where I go over sort of course sequence um, and we'll go over exactly like, well, what about ninth graders and what social studies do they take and what social studies do 10th graders take? And that is uh, coming up. We offer an economics course, uh, economics slash personal finance, and a student needs to take just that one time in their upper school career. Um, at, at least two physical education classes. Um, a student can take PE once a year if they want, so they definitely can have four credits of PE, but if they do not want that, they do not have to take that. They only need two two fine arts credits, uh, such as, say, art, for example, and then the rest being electives, okay? And the advanced diploma, I won't go over all of it for you because you'll see that lots of it is, is very, very similar. Um, but there are a few differences, and you'll notice that there's more math, there's more science, there's more social studies. Um, with social studies, students have to pass, obviously, all four of their social studies have four social studies credits. With science, um, seniors have to take physics in their senior year, so it's an extra credit of science. It's also an extra credit of math um, for an advanced diploma you have to take through Algebra 2. We also do offer up to pre-calculus for certain students who are able to as well. Um, so students can take up to pre-calculus in the CBA upper school. But to get the advanced diploma, um, a minimum of Algebra 2 is required. You'll also notice that we have two foreign language credits. Um, for the past two years now, CBA has been working with Virtual Virginia um, to offer foreign language courses to our students online, uh, which has been really, really wonderful because in the past, students have wanted and have had very um, firm ideas about what language they wanted to take. Some people really don't want to take Spanish. They want to take French. They want to take German. Um, and students are really interested in that. And as a small private school, it was really hard um, to make sure that they had all the choices that they wanted. Through Virtual Virginia, students have a wide selection of foreign languages to choose from. Now, don't worry about even thinking about a foreign language right now because ninth graders, they don't take a foreign language. That's something, again, that we talk about in the ninth grade year and we think about maybe in the 10th grade, but again, most students take them in the 11th grade. So again, just things for you to think about. Um, and again, throughout the ninth grade year and throughout your transition to the upper school, we will begin to have those conversations, right? You'll also notice that you still have an economics course, a fine arts credit, and then three basic electives credits. So a little bit more core classes, if you will, a little bit more required, right? Um, and then obviously the remainder being elective, okay? Now, um, if we can just talk about sequence, right? As I promised before, um, this is the general sequence, right? Not including computer science, which I spoke about earlier. Um, again, algebra, geometry, algebra two, which includes trigonometry, and then pre-calculus, right? So must have algebra and geometry, must have algebra two if you are um, wanting to get an advanced diploma. And then as I spoke about earlier, for our English literature sequence, right? Ninth graders take, oh, excuse me, sometimes this likes to get ahead of itself, and I do apologize. Ninth graders take experiencing literature, 10th take world literature, 11th, as I said earlier, American, and then 12th British literature. And since social studies wanted to show itself, let's talk about social studies. Ninth graders take um, Western Hemisphere, world history and geography, Western Hemisphere. We basically call it in the upper school European history. Uh, they take European history. And then 10th graders take Eastern geography, uh, Eastern history, which we shortly call Asian history. So other schools um, do this in a variety of ways. Some schools have sort of like one year of world history where they cram everything in one year and then one year of geography. Um, some schools have sort of like an ancient history. 
and then a more modern history. You know, we found that if we can sort of stay in one region and kind of have a cohesive story and then include geography in that story, it makes it a lot easier for our students, right? So again, ninth graders take European history um, and then 10th Asian history, 11th United States, and 12th American government. I will say, too, that um, when 10th graders take Eastern history, there is a crossover um, and a partnership with literature, who also focuses on a lot of um, Asian-themed writings when they're in the 10th grade, because that's when they're taking world literature. So we always try to kind of match up um, our social studies and Englishes and make the most of those connections, right? Uh, science, very quickly, as I went over before, Ninth graders take earth and planetary science, 10th graders take biology, 11th graders take chemistry, and 12th graders take physics, okay? So that is our science sequence. And then there's just our elective courses, um, some courses that I haven't mentioned, some I have, like computer science, for example. We also in the upper school have a makerspace class, Make CBA, the economics and personal finance course that I spoke about. We offer a sociology elective in in the upper school, PE, just as you had in middle school with Ms. Frazier, we have band. We have uh, two types of art courses in the upper school, a ceramics course, a studio art course, and there are sometimes we offer also a murals course if um, we have more students that are interested in mural design. If you've ever come to the upper school, and I know you will be a lot in the fall, you'll see that our hallways um, have paintings. Um, we have sort of decorations out, and lots of that is done by the murals class, um, which is not listed here because it sometimes takes place as part of or in substitution to studio art. So we always have at least um, two art classes a year to choose from. And then also like middle school, we have a culinary arts program as well, right? Um, now, I want to kind of talk about our block schedule because it is different than middle school. We are on what we call a four by four block schedule. Um, now, what that means is that students have the same four 90 minute blocks a day every day. So the first day of school until January, semester one, they have the same four classes. So they only have four classes to worry about. They're not juggling eight. They're not worrying about all of that, just four. And then once we hit January for semester two, students have a new set of four classes, okay? Now you'll notice that I've given a sample here. Students, and I try this to do this, I try very hard to do this where students take two core and two elective a semester. So again, they're only having to worry about two core classes at a time. And I also split it up where I try to give them, say, a math and English and then a science and a social studies, right? So that in both semesters, they're doing reading and writing. And then in both semesters, they're working on their math skills as well. I also have to say that I will work very hard to give students what they would like as an elective, but I always have a saying upstairs where I promise you that you will get what you need and I'll do my best to give you what you want because some students might need to be in a particular math or English section and that's going to take precedence over an elective, okay? Now, Lastly, where do we go from here, right? I spoke about a lot and I, you know, I wanted to kind of keep this short and concise. Um, first and foremost, if there's something I did not answer or you have more questions or just want to open up a general dialogue, email me, uh, communicate with me. We'll set something up. We can email. We can even set up a Zoom. I begin to make the schedule for next year around the end of April, and I will contact you then to set up a Zoom conference with you and your child so that we can go over schedules, summer readings, upper school dress code, kind of all of those basic housekeeping things so that everyone will know what they need to do and what their classes are um, in the fall. So I thank you for listening to this. I look forward to working with you. And again, if there's something I didn't answer or you have another question or just want to reach out, shoot me an email. Uh, we can begin to open that dialogue and begin to work together. I hope you all are doing well and staying healthy, and I cannot wait to see you in the fall. Thank you.